How's everybody doing? So, first off, welcome, right? This is probably going to be one of the first videos you see me do. Hopefully, it's not one of the last. It's really going to depend on the kind of responses we get out of it. Not negative, but uh, just if anybody's getting any useful information out of these videos. So, right now, it is uh, October the 17th, 2020, and this is in response to a lot of videos that have been floating around, a lot of questions I've been asked, uh, both between work and personal life about the best option for a concealed carry weapon or what weapon I recommend getting um, in the midst of this coronavirus outbreak. Uh, I know a lot of people are purchasing firearms for the first time. And I know a lot of people who really don't have a lot of experience with firearms are purchasing for the first time. And then we've kind of pushed people to, to more want the, the security that comes with owning a firearm. Um, my first caveat, and uh, if we do decide to make any more videos and we go any further forward, is uh, training, right? There is absolutely no substitute for training. Whether or not you go out and you spend $5,000 on a weapon, or you go out and you spend $300 on a weapon, or anywhere in between, wherever you fall, the biggest thing I can tell anybody to do is spend the money on training. At a bare minimum, uh, take your concealed carry permit class and take a tactical firearm shooting class from a reputable instructor, right? Not your local guy at the gun shop that does it on the side, but somebody who makes a living training people on how to shoot. There are numerous amounts of quality firearms instructors all across the United States. Most of them travel and go to a reputable uh, trainer to learn how to shoot there is absolutely no substitute for training. I mean, somebody with a $300 pistol and $10,000 worth of training is way more lethal and way more deadly and way better prepared than somebody with just a $10,000 pistol and $0 worth of training. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and move on. All right, so what I get asked the most of the time is what weapon do you recommend that I purchase and, and that's a loaded question right so it's really hard to give a, a one blanket statement answer to that uh, I own multiple firearms and a wide variety of calibers um, but when we boil it down what most people are looking for when they're they're asking that question and they're thinking is oh we're, I'm looking for a handgun right and uh, if you're looking for a handgun that you can both conceal carry and use for home defense I find it very, very hard to beat the uh, the Glock, right? So this is a Glock 45, obviously. I have a light on mine, and I put a Trigicon SRO on it. Uh, I'm a big fan of the SRO. I'm actually swapping it, though. Um, I'm going to go with the Aimpoint Acro. After putting this on there, I've, I've been shooting it for about a year on top of there. I like it a lot. Uh, pistol's very accurate, but uh, I wanted something that felt a little bit more durable, that was a little heavier. Um, and this is actually going to go on a uh, PCC in 9mm, so it's going to go on a rifle. Um, it's a little bit wider than I wanted. It sticks over top of the frame. It hangs out a little bit. But with that being said, it's been a great optic. You know, if, if that's what you decide to put on your pistol, I don't think you'll regret it. Uh, and I have a Surefire X300 on my pistol. And I think the only piece of gear that's actually more important than the weapon you buy is the light. Uh, whatever you do, don't skimp on a light, and I would 100% recommend buying a light for for your weapon. There, there's a few good companies out there um, across the board. You know, I mean, there's Surefire, there's Streamlight, there's uh, Olight, and then there's like Enforce. Um, I mean, if I miss one, I miss one. But there, there are a lot of quality firearms light companies, and and the same thing I'm gonna tell you is just do your research. Right? Like you wouldn't vehicle without doing any kind of research the same thing is true with like a weapon or light and a, and a weapon itself and even a sight or an optic um, but let's ignore the optic right uh, I, I don't think that that's a necessary purchase for anybody however I would recommend getting a weapon that does allow you to put an optic on it because down the road you might decide that, that is something you're interested in doing and having a slide already cut for it uh, at the initial purchase of the weapon makes it a lot easier to put them on also, they're not that much more expensive. They're actually a lot cheaper than sending your slide off down the road to get remilled. And it's factory spec, so that's very important, right? It's a factory spec cut. It's designed to work from the factory. You don't want to do anything that's going to take away from that. Uh, the 
light, right? That 100%, any weapon you get for either self-defense or, or concealed carry, put a light on it, right? I, I always tell people that are coming to me and they're asking for advice. Like, Bad stuff doesn't happen when it's sunny and 75 at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, it does happen then, but it, it's way more likely that you're going to be coming home from work. It's going to be raining or it's just going to be dark or it's going to be cold. Um, and, and the most, most bad things that are going to happen to you are going to happen at night. So putting a light on your weapon, uh, one, if the light is bright enough, like the X300 Ultras or some of the other ones, um, like the Cloud Defensive, wonderful weapon system light. It's very expensive, but it's a great light. Um, and, uh, and it actually works as concealment, right? It's not cover, but it is concealment. It disorients an attacker. Um, and there's very few times that a, a light's just going to be shined without a, a weapon being pointed at it. So um, it'll it'll really help to get the message across. The next thing that I want to go ahead and say before I break down into the pistols and your different options and everything of that nature is incorporate the word stop. In your um, giving a verbal warning for somebody to, to stop is one of the biggest uh, events you have to do before engaging in lethal force, both military law enforcement and civilian alike you you almost have to give that verbal warning right to escalate your force um and you'll look stupid at the gun range by doing it but you'll look a lot smarter in a courtroom after it's done so when you're going to the range when you're tra practicing when you're training when you're going down that route yell stop when you draw your weapon nobody can say anything to you at the gun range for doing it right they might tell you to keep it down if if that's your range rules okay right you got to do what you got to do um, but you can still mutter it under your breath and you get into that repetition because you're only going to be able to recall under pressure what you learn under pressure. Uh, along with it, I really recommend buying a shot timer. It creates stress, right? You need stress in order to train correctly, like that little buzzer, that beeper, that, that stress. It might not be the same level, but it is stress. So the Pack Club 2 uh, is a wonderful shot timer. That's the one I use. It's actually in my wife's car. She just left for work. Um, but it, I think they're like 65 bucks, and they are wonderful timers. You can hear it. Uh, if you get them close to your weapon, like you put it up here on your shoulder or whatever while you're shooting, well, you can even do dry fire training, and a lot of the times that, that shot timer will pick up the striker going forward or the hammer falling. Um, another thing I wanted to get into was striker fire, right? Um, I'm sorry, guys. Like This is going to burn some people, but it's not World War II. Right, so the, the Walther P-38 was like the first double action, single action pistol that was developed uh, and really issued commonly for the military. That was an auto-loading pistol. And it was developed because a lot of the Nazis were shooting themselves with the Luger. Um, and it was a solution to that to make the first round a really, really heavy trigger pull. So again, that the, the advantage of a double action pistol uh, is completely blown out of the water with just getting training with with a striker fire or a single action only um i there there's no substitute for training but i would not advise getting a hammer fired pistol it's 2020 guys i mean it's it's like i tell everybody when they're asking it's 2020 it's the age of the striker fire double stack polymer frame safety -less handgun right so glocks are obviously very inherently safe but it's due to their trigger uh same way with like your canic your mmps all of those, I mean, for all intents and purposes, they're Glocks just made by other companies. Um, and that's that's really what you're going to be looking for, whatever fits, right? whatever works. Uh, don't worry about brand. Don't worry about how they look, right? Like Glocks are not, I, Glocks, I refer to them as functionally beautiful, right? As you look at them, they're very bright. They're not expensive, but they're very, very accurate. They're very, very reliable. They're very user friendly. Uh, and that's what you're really going to be looking for when you get a pistol. So without further ado, we're going to go into uh, the, the two weapons that I kind of like to rotate back and forth but between using and carrying, depending on where I'm going, what I'm doing, what, what form I'm going to be carrying. So we'll go ahead and start with the holster. So whatever you get, you have to be able to carry. Um, so a pistol that you own is completely useless if it is not on your person or with your body uh, because if you're not going to carry it what's the point of owning it unless you're buying it for home defense and if you're only going to leave it at your home for home defense i do not recommend a handgun um, rifle cartridges intermediate cartridges do way better 
at stopping advancing threats, stopping adversaries. They have a much higher magazine capacity. They have a longer sight radius. Uh, and for, generally speaking, they're, they're honestly easier to teach people to be uh, handguns. Uh, so if you're not going to carry it, tune in for another video. I'll do another video on home defense for uh, persons that do not wish to carry but still want to be able to defend themselves inside of their home. So this is a T-Rex Arms Ragnarok. I do not have any sponsorships or affiliations whatsoever by any company. Uh, these holsters, all of my stuff, I've went out and purchased myself. Nobody, this was a, this was a birthday present from one of my best friends. I stayed on him for about a year and he finally caved in when he stopped carrying it. Cause he's, he's a little bit smaller of a guy. Uh, and he actually bought the exact same holster just without the spare magazine pouch. So, uh, T-Rex Arms, those guys are doing some really great stuff, uh, with holsters. They're, they're unreasonably comfortable for how large they are and, and even for bigger guys, you know, they're not great. Um, they're not perfect, but the advantages outweigh the disadvantage. And what I would encourage you to do is, is to get Kydex, you know, in fact, it's just like owning a polymer frame, strike, fire, double stack pistol. Um, it's 2020, you know, like leather has a lot of disadvantages that Kydex makes up for. And I don't think you will deal with the same problems and issues out of a Kydex as you will a leather. <clears throat> uh, so into the pistol, right? Um, for your Glock, this is a Glock 45. So it has front side serrations, rear side serrations. It came with the RMR cut. So you can put an optic on it. One thing is this pistol already has night sights on it from Glock. So this is the one that comes with it. It came with uh, 17 round magazines um, from uh, I, I've just been an absolute phenomenal fan. I mean, this uh, this pistol, the way it's set up, we, we ring about 10 inch steel targets at 62 yards um, almost every single time. It's a phenomenally well shooting little pistol. So what this is, this is a Glock 19 slide on a Glock 17 frame, so the lower. Uh, it has completely ambidextrous controls on it, so your slide stop is right here. Uh, it is also right here. They have beaver tails that you can put on them. I do not recommend using them. Uh, it's another piece to get in the way of a moving slide. To go to a decent instructor. They'll probably tell you the same thing, right? Like the less crap you put on your gun, the better off it's going to be. A lot of them don't even like the red dots and, and that's completely okay. I'm not telling you to go against whatever you like or what your instructor likes. I happen to like the red dots. I'm, I'm very, very good with them. I'm very fast with them. I'm able to pick it up uh, quickly. I'm able to get it on target. I'm able to get it back on target, right? So it works for me. And that's one of the most important things about shooting, especially handgun shooting, is you're going to have to do what works for you and not really be super concerned with what works for everybody else. Um, your light, uh, figure out what light works best from you uh, or for you, for your needs, and, and just purchase it, right? There's the Surefire X300 use are very expensive. Um, if you're looking for a budget way to come into the market, I would recommend like a Surefire TLR1. Like those are those are pretty solid lights, and they usually come in at the price point of between about 110 and 120 dollars. So um, they're they're very easy to get your hands on. Don't don't do crazy stupid shit to your carry gun either. I'm, I'm sorry for the language, but like I see it all the time. Like, put a brand new trigger in their pistol and, and it'll go nuts. I mean, just about the only thing I would recommend is if you're going to get one of these and you're not going to buy one with factory night sights, go, go on XS's website and buy a set of XS Big Dots. XS with the leather X, X-Ray Sierra Big Dots. Uh, again, I'm not paid by anybody to do this. I'm not given anything. Those are the best combat sights money can buy. They're really, really inexpensive. Um, they're not hard to learn and by the time you get used to learning them you won't even be willing to go back to even look at any other sites I mean they're just absolutely incredible this came with three dot sites um, and and as soon as the, the tritium starts to go out on these even brand new ones, it's gonna be replaced with but I knew I was gonna be putting an optic on it I knew I wanted uh, tritium irons as a backup um, and yeah like you guys are gonna go nuts because I don't have suppressor height sites so I can't co-witness it okay that's Look, I'm not here to start any arguments, right? Like I could pull this off with an Allen wrench. I keep an Allen wrench in my in my pocket whenever I go out. Um, I can shoot about seven inches with it. Anyway, I really don't plan on shooting any farther than that. So let's everybody just calm down. Um, 
the, also in the feed below this where there's going to be a ton of comments because that's how every YouTube video is. Um, you can you can be rude and hateful to me, but I do ask that you do not disrespect other people that are asking questions and trying to learn. Right? They, I'm doing these videos to try and help people, and if you're gonna really if you're gonna come in and be a jackass, like we don't need your opinions on here. Um, I mean, everybody's got their own opinions. These are just my opinions. If you don't agree, that's completely fine. I would love to have an intelligent conversation with you about your opinions. I'm not cement in mine. Uh, I've just found that this is what's worked for me. This is what's worked for a really long time for me, and I'm very, very good um, with my uh, with my with my firearm skills, especially my handgun. So I wanted to share some of that information on a form that would allow. My next option, right? This is one that I would recommend if you're going to carry. Um, if you're not necessarily going to carry it often, or you might not be carrying on body. You might choose elector or off body carry or you are not going to carry it at all but you're not going to listen to me and you're going to um, use a handgun for home defense and home defense only so this is a canic tp9 sfx 